So in the previous video, we created our HTTP server and we were sending a string back as a response. And I also showed you how to create parts of the URL using the URL property on our request. In this video, we're going to swap out this string to return some HTML. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is create a HTML file. So over in the root of our project, I'm just going to create a new file and I'm going to call this index.html. And then inside of here, I've just pasted in a basic HTML skeleton. Nothing fancy here, it's got a title and a body with a h1 tag. So now we need a way to actually load this HTML file before we can send it back in the response. So we need to create a new function for this. So up the top here, I'm going to say func and I'm going to say load file. And then this is going to take in a string of the file name that we need to load. And that's obviously a string. And then this function is going to either return a string or it's going to return a error. So we need to bring in another library for this. And we need to bring in a library called io io util. So up in the imports, I'm just going to bring that in. It's io forward slash io util. And this just gives us some functions that we can use for working with the file system and opening files. So what we're going to do is use a function called read file on the io util library. And what this does is this would turn us either an error or the byte of the file. So let's create a new variable called bytes. And then let's also catch that error that it might return. And we're going to set those variables to the output of IOUtil. And we're going to call that method read file. And then we just want to pass in the file name that we're going to be passing into the function. And then that will try and load it from disk. The first thing we want to check is whether this has returned an error. So it will return an error if it can't open that file or find that file for whatever reason. If the error variable comes back as not equal to nil, that means there is something in there. Let's just, for now, let's just return, um, we'll return an empty string, and then we'll return the error. If you remember, this function needs to return a string and an error. Okay, and then if it does find this file, what we're going to do is we're going to return a string of the bytes. So we need to cast the bytes to a string. So we can do that with return, and then we can call string, and then we can pass it in the bytes of the file, and we're storing that in this variable here. So we're using the read file to load into the bytes variable, and then we're casting it to a string and returning it. And then for the error, we can return nil as there's no errors at this point. Now we have our load file function to load the file from disk. We need to let our handler know to use it. So inside of our handler, let's create a new variable and we're gonna call this our HTML. And for now, let's just ignore the possible returned error and we can do that with an underscore. And we'll come back to this shortly. Uh, then we're gonna set this equal to our load file function. And we're gonna pass it in a string of what file to load. And we created that index.html file. So we're going to try and load that. And then the next thing we need to do now we've got that HTML is print it out to the screen. So we can do FMT and then we can do F print. Then F print requires an IO writer. As you can see, my ID has hinted at that for me. So we can pass in our writer. And then the second thing it needs is what to output. And we're going to output the HTML. Now we don't need this line because we're not going to be printing strings out. So let's just remove that. And this needs to be double quotes, not single quotes. Okay, so now let's just try this out in the browser. If you do have the server still running in the background, you'll have to shut that server down and reboot it to make use of these changes. So you can just do a go run server.go again. And then that'll bring it back up. And then this time when you head over to localhost and port 9000, you can see here now it's actually returning us back the HTML. If we just right click on this and click view page source, we can see it's actually returning the whole HTML document to us. And then we can change this now. So instead of saying hello go server, we can say hello mark, for example. Let's just give this a refresh and you can see that's updated instantly. We can make changes to our HTML files now and we won't have to stop and start the server. At the moment, we're not handling any of the errors. So let's just jump back over to our code and go into server.go. And instead of trying to load index.html, let's try and load index2.html. Now this file doesn't exist. So this is going to give an error, but we're ignoring it at the moment. And at the top, we're just returning an empty string. So let's stop and start our server. Now let's go back over to our web page and give this a refresh. 
and you can see we just get an empty page back which is obviously not very good for the end users so up in our load file let's return a response code so we could return probably two response codes here either a 404 which is probably the most common for this kind of thing if this was dynamic if we're getting this from the url which we're going to do later in the series then it would make sense to do that as a 404 because it can't find the resource but there's also the possibility of giving a 500 internal server error here and that is because it's trying to load this file that we've hard coded in so really it is an internal server error rather than the user trying to navigate to somewhere that doesn't exist leave that up to you but i'll just show you how to send the response code but later in the video, we will be using a 404. So inside of our handler function, we're currently getting back either HTML or an error from the load file function. And we're currently ignoring the error. But now let's save that to a variable. And then we can say if the error is not, not equal to nil. So if it has returned an error, we can go into our response writer. Let me just move this up the screen a bit. Go into our response writer and we can say write header and then we can say what kind of status code we want to write to the header as i said probably 500 makes the most sense currently but because i'm going to be changing this up in the future i'm going to return a 404 here now let's actually just try this out in the browser so again stop and start the server and then over here instead of returning to an empty page we're going to look at that error and actually return a 404 as you see there now it displays your default browser's 404 page but we can also send down a custom message a custom 404 page if we wanted so i'm just going to do that with a string now but you could go back into that load file function and try and load up a custom 404 html but for now let's just do an fmt and we can do f print and then we need to pass in our fonts right here and we can just output a custom message and we say 404 sorry couldn't find this page now it's just refreshing the browser now let's take a look in the browser so stop and restart the server give this a refresh now you can see we get our custom 404 response back so you could see how easily you could just load file again here and build out a custom 404 page now we can load html files from the disk in the next video let's look at how we can make this a little bit more dynamic by reading the URL and then finding or not finding the relevant HTML file on the disk. And if we can't find it, then we're gonna be using our 404 error here. And if we do find it, we're just gonna return it back to the user. So if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more Go related content on my channel. And I also have a lot of PHP and Laravel content if you're also interested in PHP web development.